Leanne, what a joy. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, thanks. I'm so excited. <laughs> so you've had quite the road mm -hmm. uh, from growing up in stress. Mm. I read that, right? Yep. To being wildly successful. You've performed, my goodness, nearly 30 years. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it is. Well, I found out that we might see each other. Some of your music's just, I mean, it's just sort of lives in my brain. <laughs> like in so many people's brain. <laughs> I'm embedded in there. You're in the embedded. Brain. <laughs> really, you're here to see me because of the constant anxiety, the bouts of depression, mm -hmm. and the lack of joy. Mm -hmm. And so I can calm your anxiety, stabilize your mood, mm -hmm. so you're less vulnerable to those dark times, increase your joy. That'd be a good goal. That sounds great. <laughs> okay. So biggest goal to access the joy you're capable of. You just want to feel good. Yeah. And not dread. Yes. The day when you get up. Yeah. You know, when I'm home, there's still, I mean, there's, I'm still constantly doing something because I feel like even the, even recording or certain, you know, interviews, like, I feel like all of those are dopamine drivers. So. How, how, how much of that do you love? Um, it depends if I'm... Because love is a drug. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, if I'm doing an interview where I get to discuss my, you know, humanity and my healing and all of that, like, I love doing that. Um, I love being on stage. I hate traveling. <laughs> so I was on the road doing, I did 500 shows in the first three and a half years from the time I was 13. And then... Why? <laughs> You know, I have no idea. Um, because you yeah, could, I guess. Yeah, I guess. And so, who's managing? <laughs> my dad at the time. And then I went through a lawsuit with my father. I sued my father and I sued my record label at 16. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. So that was a very traumatic time between, you know, not having a family unit and then really not having any support. You ended up suing your dad and your record label because um mismanagement of funds um and the record deal that i signed um was is known as the worst record deal in history it just tied me to it till i was like in my mid-30s ended up re-signing a better deal with that label it was kind of the only way i could be it was the only way i could make music again and was in a deal with them for another six records and then finally got out at almost 30. Yeah. Wow. And were you mad the whole time? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I still, if you bring it up, I'm like, <laughs> there's still some stuff underlying there. Um, the music industry is messed up. Um, I had Justin Bieber on this couch. They almost killed that boy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like 174. Uh, concerts oh, yeah. in a couple of years. Yeah, I'm like, no. are you people insane? Yeah, no, I've been they there. They just wore out his dopamine centers. It sounds like the same thing happened yeah, to you. Absolutely. And you're confused and you're mad and you're oh, sad yeah. and you yeah. have this great talent and yet all these negative emotions. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about your brain. Yep. So we do a study called SPECT, and SPECT looks at blood flow and activity. It looks at how your brain works. It's different than a CAT scan or an MRI that looks at the brain structure. SPECT looks at how your brain works. And it basically shows us three things. Good activity, you have a lot. Too little, there's some that's really important we have to fix were too much. Mm -hmm. and that's the really interesting part. So this is an example of a healthy scan. When we look at your scan, I put off and on bivans. Off bivans, your brain is hurt. It's sleepy, mm -hmm. especially in your temporal lobes here. These guys are clearly struggling. I mean, that's where I got hit. In yeah, the no, I think uh, post, some of this is post concussion. 
And the accident happened when you were 20? 25, maybe. Yeah. So when the, and you said about 28 is when you started to really get anxious and were depressed. So the worldwide shame thing happened around that Mm -hmm. time, right? Like, the worldwide shame, I like that. I'm yes, sorry. The worldwide shame thing, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I've been Justin's doctor and my, I'm my oh, yeah. doctor. They both went through it. Oh, they've been through it for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, that all happened very close together. And then my brain isn't even completely formed, right, at that, at that age. It's so about when it's finished. Started, yeah. But your brain, your whole life, your brain has been assaulted with stress. Oh yeah, for sure. So the question you should always ask me is, all right, Daniel, can (laughs) you make this better? (laughs) Be a whole bunch better. But the cool thing is, is I actually have your scan on Vyvanse. Do you see how much better it is? Mm -hmm. On the one on the right, your temporal lobes are fuller, they're fatter, they're healthier. Um, You know, so it does help. It's not a complete fix, but your brain can respond. The problem is it makes you more anxious. Yeah. So watch. Blue is average activity. Red is the top 15%. White is the top 8%. And this can become really interesting for you. So here's your brain off by Vance, the one here Mm -hmm. on the left. Your mood center is way too high. So that's the vulnerability to depression. Mm. Your cerebellum is super sleepy. That's not good Mm -hmm. for you. What causes Uh, that? I'm sorry. What causes the cerebellum to be sleepy? It could be the concussion. Okay. So if I just saw this, I'm like sleepy cerebellum, mood center high, and this is your anxiety center. But notice over here, there's nothing going on. Is that my and left that's side? that's not normal. Is that the left side? Um, no, this is the right side. So oh. here it's like we're looking up underneath. The okay, oh, got it, got it. Yep. And these are your dopamine areas. Mm. And I think you wore yours out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we have to fix it. Now, it's completely fixable. And when you get... Vyvanse, Vyvanse works specifically in this area here called the basal ganglia on the dopamine receptors. It inactivates. Amazing. The problem was it sort of activates this one to more normal and flames this one. That's so you the become anxiety anxious and yeah. Yep. And so I'm not sure that's the right thing <laughs> okay. for you. And, you know, off of it, you're sort of calmer you said i'm calmer but i'm still moody <sighs> but that was also i mean to be expected i think as a if you're coming off of it for a moment um but i'm and i'm way more lethargic like there's not there's not a drive to like get up and do things um i really have to talk myself into like because your brain is sick yeah like your brushing brain- my teeth is not a shower. healthy, right? So if we go here, you are not going to like have that mm-hmm. motivation to like go, come on, let's do your life. Mm-hmm. Why is behavior change hard? Because new skills have no connections. In there, right? <laughs> it's like, sort of like skiing down a mountain where there's no trail. Right. It's hard. And once you do a behavior over and over again, like negative thoughts, they develop trail in your brain and then you just slide down right. the hill and um, yeah so you're developing these ruts in your brain that we have to change um okay so part of inspiration is dopamine, dopamine is not the molecule of pleasure it's the molecule of motivation and now i've got <laughs> zero <laughs> motivation what should I start with then? Brain and memory. Okay. And then, um, like, give it a week. See how I'm it sorry? Goes. Give it a week. See how it give goes. Give it a week. See what you think. Yeah. Do things fit what you want? 
And it's hard to know which one when you're feeling anxious and... Well, that's the hard part. It's like with no dopamine and no motivation, it's hard to, even though I have purpose and feel like I'm connected, it's hard to continue to feel that way because there's no motivation to do the things that feel purposeful. So, so it seems like this, like, yes, passion and purpose help, but then there's no energy and motivation to actually do the things that feel that good. So it's like, well, how do I get, how do I get there? <laughs> With no energy. <laughs> we get there this way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because if it's just in this sleepy state, your brain is struggling. And so it doesn't have the cognitive control to get rid of the negativity we were all born with because it helped us survive thousands. Yeah, I ago. can. That's exactly what happens because I can have my brain start to go, it'll start to go down this negative looping path. And I literally have to stop myself and go, nope, I'm going to direct it over here. <laughs> and I'm going to, I'm grateful for it. I do that every morning. I'm grateful for today. The brain is lazy. Mm -hmm. The brain does what you've allowed it to do. Mm -hmm. And so, so that'll be our goal. Okay. And for me, I always like, I'm your partner, right? I'm not your boss. I just recommend. And then I always like, let's try something new and assess, new and assess. So one of my favorite words in the English language is iterate. <laughs> <laughs> try this and see what happens. Okay. Um, Very good. I'm not a huge fan. Oh, in fact, um, yeah, lower the Vyvanse. I imagine on 20 milligrams of Vyvanse, that anxiety symptom. Yes. Up. Yeah. And then I'd just be curious about the ants. I'd watch for them. Yeah, I'll definitely start taking note. Because one of the beautiful things about meditation is you watch what you think. Mm -hmm. And wonder if you can just begin to notice the little creepy black things that some of them are red the really toxic yeah, i think ones. Uh, one of my biggest things is the the guilt of knowing better and not being able to do better sometimes you know choosing the option that's not not necessarily in my favor mm -hmm. um i think that's probably one of the biggest things that goes round and round in my mind some days i'm great at it other days i'm not so well and if you can be curious mm -hmm and not furious and then we can talk about it because like sometimes when I'm treating people that have eating disorders it's actually a decision the day before that caused them to mm -hmm. make themselves throw up the next day makes because sense. and they didn't even connect it makes sense um, okay. yeah and doing all these healing things mm -hmm. it's stressful mm -hmm. It is. I mean, not seeing me, but yeah. um. <laughs> very stressful. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, it makes sense. Completely makes sense. So when you're anxious, theanine gummies, and you can take up to three. Okay. Don't do it with gabapentin, or you'll be drunk. <laughs> In fact, I'm thinking of marketing it is. I know. I was going to say you want people. Wine. You exactly. You want people to get off of wine and tell them to take those two together, and they'll be good to go. <laughs> This was fun. So I, I did diagnose myself, diagnose myself. <laughs> so I did self-diagnose pretty well after I started reading all about this. <laughs>